in this video, I'm just going to show you about how to create new channels uh, for and some just discuss some advanced routing within Pro Tools. Uh, in order to create a new channel, you just need to use the command set of Command Shift N. Uh, this will bring up a dialog window as to uh, the channels and the types you want to create. Now, using the up and down arrows, you'll see that I'm able to say how many channels I want to create. So in this instance, I'm going to create four. And you see that it says mono. Uh, and if I do left and right holding the command, you'll see it swaps from mono to stereo. So in this instance, I want to create four mono uh, audio tracks. If I use holding the command still and just press up, you can see it changes that as well. If I press down, it changes it to an aux input, changes it to a master fader or a VCA master. And then you get MIDI track, an instrument track, and then you start getting uh, default instruments as well. But for this, I'm going to set up uh, four mono audio tracks. If I do Command Shift and N, that creates another level. Uh, and then what I'm going to do again is create uh, a couple of mono um, instrument uh, aux audio, audio tracks. So I'm just going to there, and then I'm going to create another but this time it's going to be a stereo. So one stereo. So go to the right and then stereo aux input. I'm going to create another channel. And I'm just going to create a VCA master. And then finally, I'm going to create a master fader and that is going to be stereo. So I've got these different channels set up and I can go into this and I can I can name these as well. So I can predetermine the name of the audio and what they might be from creating one channel. Um, again, you can create more and click up and down as well. You can change the order of these as well. But if I just hit create as they are. And you'll see now that they are populated here within uh, my window. If I just minimize that. Um, I can also change the view just by uh, clicking here and altering that as well, the size of them. Um, bringing it up here into the uh, mix session, I'm just going to explain some of the routing. So obviously within the uh, sort of audio channels here, and if I just select uh, those audio channels and make them the same, I can just very quickly uh, make them all click here, make them all yellow. So my mono audio channels, I can see the inserts. So they've got five inserts here and five cents. I can very quickly through the view and mix window view, I can add more of those. So I can actually have up to 10 inserts, 10 plugins by clicking on that. And that shows F to J and likewise with uh, sends, I can click on that. And that also then brings up F to J in terms of sends. So I have 10 different sends. I can also show uh, an EQ curve as well if I want to see how my EQs might look as a quick overview. So there's lots of different ways you can see things. It also shows you my IOs. So you remember back in the previous video, I was talking about the inputs. You can see my inputs there and then my Kemper ones and the ADATs and everything. I've also got main outs. So the default is set to main out and that goes to my master fader. I then got the automation I can set here. I've got groups, which will be explained in another video. You've got your panning left and right and holding the option key in the middle can then center that. You've got your input monitoring. So if I was to set that to input two, you can see I've got input monitoring going on. Uh, so it shows me the levels coming without recording. I can then press that and it'll arm the channel ready to record. Uh, but we're not going to do any recording now. Um, you've also got solo. And you've got your mute and then you've got your fader again holding the option key that will then centralize it back to a uh, unity interestingly the uh metering here zero and un zero unity don't actually correlate at all um which is a bit frustrating but that's another that's a discussion for another day um the stereo channel will be the same uh which is reflected here the aux one is different because you haven't got any input monitoring or any record. All it is is to do uh, additional processing. So this aux one is mono, and you can tell because it's got the mono f uh, panning set up here. 
And then I've got this one, my AUX3, which is stereo. And you can see it's got the two uh, pan pots. Logic, you've got the one pan pot where you can then change the balance of something. But actually here you've got separate um, pan facility. And again, you can obviously apply the plugins. And if I go here, you'll notice that I've got different ways to access. But if I go into here, you can see all my different uh, bus setups. And one of them that I had, which I always set up, is a submix. Now, what's a submix? Essentially, the difference between audio channels and aux channels is that any plugins you have on them, they are pre fader Now, what that means is that the signal, if you think of it like tape, it comes in from the top, comes down through the plugins, through your panning, to the fader, and then to the master fader. Whereas on the master fader, the plugins are post fader. So all the signal comes to the fader and the fader and the signal then goes up through the plugins and then out to be bounced or whatever. Now, the problem with that is, is that if you've mixed into the master fader with your compression and everything, and you realize you are peaking, if you bring this fader down to stop the peaking, you're affecting how you are hitting the compressors and the EQs and you change that whole balance, uh, which is something you don't want. Whereas by setting up on here and have it as a submix, if I was to label that as submix, whatever comes through here, my compression, EQs and all those sorts of things, if it's too hot coming into my master, I can bring this fader down. It has no impact on the compression, the EQ I have. It's still the same sound. It's just not going into the master fader as hot, which means that my mix won't clip and it won't be crunchy and, and, hot and you get all those distortion and those artifacts. The other channel I've shown here as well is the VCA master. And the VCA master can be set up through groups, but essentially you'll notice it has no option for plugins or panning. It doesn't actually pass any audio through it at all. All the VCA master does is it acts like a master fader for those groups of faders. So if you were to group all your drums, and we'll say these were drums, and they were grouped to this master fader, if my drum balance was too much, uh, or I wanted to reset the balance, I could just bring this fader down and it would affect all of these faders and any sends that they have as well. So it'll always keep the balance together. Whereas if you were to do it this uh, sort of mix and then group everything with an auxiliary, if you bring that down, it would bring the volumes down, but any send you've got will be left unadjusted. And if you rebalance that later on, you might find using this, sometimes that your drums will sound more... Uh, more kind of verby where you've got reverbs because they remain untouched. Uh, as I say, where is the VCA, it affects everything that's to do with those channels and the volumes that go in uh, and, and it, it keeps them all fixed together. So a VCA is a very powerful tool, especially when you're working on bigger mixes. You might have your drum balance working really well on the bass and you just find the mix is getting too loud and you just really need to reassess the overall balance. And you've got, essentially you've got those master faders uh, using those VCAs to kind of reassess the mix later on without destroying the mix you've already got. You've got the color palette then to color coordinate your um, your groups and you can then window and you've got color palette and you can call that up. So in this video, I've covered the creation of tracks, how to, alt how to change them, using the key commands to select them. You've also learned about the auxiliaries, the different types there between stereo and mono. You've also got about the VCA, the master channel, and the purpose of creating a submix and the difference between the auxiliary channels, the audio channels, and the master fader about where those plugins lie. 